Well, hello, my friends. Welcome to Granny B's house. I hope it's a good day where you are. Granny B's having a real good day. And Granny B's cat, Ed, he's gonna sit on my lap for a little while and I hope he'll be good. Sometimes he wants to snap at the book and, and make himself a pest. But he's a pretty good cat. And this is a story about a pretty good pumpkin, a really big pumpkin. But first, I want to know if you're having a good day. Are you having a good day? I hope so. Are you remembering to be kind to those people around you? Sure you are, because Granny B's friends are all very kind people. I have this book called The Biggest Pumpkin Ever. And this cat on my lap feels like the biggest cat ever. This is written by Stephen Crawl, and it's illustrated by Jenny Bassett. And Granny B's gonna try to get out of the way so you can see this pumpkin really well. Once there were two mice who fell in love with the same pumpkin. Clayton, the house mouse, noticed it one day in the vegetable. <laughs> well, I guess my cat Ed is done being on my lap, so I'm going to start this story over so we can pay attention. I wasn't paying very good attention when we started with that big old cat on my lap. Once there were two mice who fell in love with the same pumpkin. Clayton, the house mouse, noticed it one day in the vegetable garden. It was still little and green, but Clayton thought he could make it grow really big. It might even get big enough to win the grand prize at the town pumpkin contest. Desmond, the field mouse, discovered the pumpkin the same day. He thought that if he helped it grow, it could become the biggest jack-o'-lantern in the neighborhood. That afternoon, Clayton watered the pumpkin. He also mixed up some fertilizer of manure and water. He spread the mixture around the pumpkin to make it grow larger. That very same night, Desmond went into the garden. He watered the pumpkin too. He also spread some manure mixed with water around it. The next day, Clayton watered and fertilized the pumpkin again. The next night, Desmond did the same, and the pumpkin began to grow. By the end of a month, the pumpkin was so large, Clayton couldn't believe his eyes. My goodness, said Clayton's mother, and it's not even full grown. Clayton shrugged. All I do is water it, he said. Clayton's mother whispered in his ear. If you want the pumpkin to grow bigger faster, she said, you should use sugar water. That night, Desmond brought his brother Morris to see the pumpkin. Morris knew everything there was to know about growing things. That's some pumpkin, he said. Desmond shrugged. All I do is water it, he said. Morris whispered in his ear. You should try using sugar water, he said. The next day, Clayton dug a small hole beside the pumpkin pine. <clears throat> in the hole, he placed a bowl of sugar water. He cut into the vine a few inches from the pumpkin. In the cut, he put one end of a piece of candle wick. Then he put the other end in the bowl of sugar water. That night, on the other side of the pumpkin, Desmond did exactly the same thing. Within a week, the pumpkin was twice the size it had been. Within two weeks, it was absolutely enormous. Clayton was amazed. He ran down the road and peeked into his friend Jimmy's pumpkin patch. The pumpkin Jimmy was growing for the contest looked much smaller. Clayton scratched his head. I have an amazing pumpkin, he said out loud. 
and I think I'm going to win the contest. That night, Desmond and his brother Morris spent a long time looking at the pumpkin. How do you think it got that big, Desmond asked. Morris shrugged. A little luck, a little skill. It's going to make some jack-o'-lantern, said Desmond. It sure is, said Morris. A week later, Clayton noticed the pumpkin was bigger than the family car. During the day, everyone he knew came to admire it. And at night, all the field mice gathered round to do the very same. By now, summer was almost over. In a week, the pumpkin would be full grown and start turning yellowish and then orange. A few weeks after that, it would be ripe and ready for the pumpkin contest. Clayton could hardly wait. The pumpkin was growing so fast, it would soon be larger than his house. Then he had a terrible thought. If the pumpkin was so big, how would he get it to the contest? It wouldn't fit in his red wagon. It wouldn't even fit in a truck. Clayton decided to worry about this when the time came. That night, the weather grew colder. Thinking there might be an early frost, Clayton rushed out to the pumpkin with his blanket. One was not enough. Soon he was rushing back and forth, carrying all the blankets from the house. As he worked, he hummed a little song. As he hummed, he heard someone else singing. He also began to realize that someone else was covering the pumpkin with blankets. Desmond, too, had seen the danger of an early frost. He, too, had brought blankets for the pumpkin. And as he worked, he sang a little song. And as he sang, he began to realize that someone else was working and humming. Clayton stopped humming. He put down his pile of blankets and peered around the corner of the pumpkin. Desmond stopped singing. He put down his blankets and peered around the corner of the pumpkin. The two of them bumped heads and fell down. You've been feeding the pumpkin, said Clayton. You've been feeding the pumpkin, said Desmond. That's why it got so big, said Clayton. That's why it got so big, said Desmond. They burst out laughing. And everything had been explained, Clayton said, I know I'll win the contest if I can get the pumpkin to town. Desmond said, I'll help you. Just let me carve the pumpkin into a jack-o'-lantern for Halloween when the contest is over. It's a deal, said Clayton. A deal, said Desmond, and they shook on it. The morning of the contest was bright and sunny. Mice were bringing their pumpkins to the town square by truck and car and wagon. Some were rolling them along on the ground. Oh, suddenly they all stopped short. Over the fields came the biggest pumpkin anyone had ever seen. It was being pulled by a hundred field mice on motorcycles. When the pumpkin reached town, it was too big for any of the streets. Clayton had to explain why they couldn't bring it to the square. The mayor understood at once. He led the crowd to the giant pumpkin and pinned the first place ribbon on its side. Then everyone danced around it. Who would have believed this, said Clayton as he danced. Who would have believed this, said Desmond at the same moment. When the celebration was over, the hundred field mice pulled the pumpkin back to the field. The day before Halloween, they carved it into the best jack-o'-lantern ever. <gasps> and on Halloween night, it's wonderful smiling face could be seen glowing for miles around. Well, look what a little cooperation did. Those two mice working together, it just made it the best pumpkin ever. 
It won the contest, and then it was a wonderful, cheerful, light up the neighborhood jack-o'-lantern. So see what happens when people work together and cooperate? I hope you will always find someone to work together with to make this world a better place. All it takes is being kind. We can all do one small act of kindness every day and we can cooperate with the people around us to make this world a better place. So you just remember that Granny Bee loves you and Granny Bee loves it when you're kind to the people around you and when you work together with your friends to do good things. I hope you'll come back and see me again real soon because Granny B loves you and I want to read you another story, okay? Bye-bye.